Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. This is the spindle in, and I've had a lot of people ask me to demonstrate and talk a little bit about this very, very unique spindle. And so over the course of the last few spindle spotlights, I've been focusing on non-traditional styles of spindle. Now, when you look at this, it is in essence a, a traditional style in the fact that it has a shaft and a whorl. So this is what we would traditionally call a bottom or a low whorl drop spindle. But Katie May, who is the inventor of the Spindle she has both a website and an Etsy site. I'm just gonna link in the website down in the description because that has all of the links to how to contact her Etsy site, frequently asked questions, but she has labeled or named this as a quill supported hand spindle. The spindle in comes with a base like you see here. The base traditionally you could either set on a table or set it in your lap or between your legs, whatever is the most comfortable for you. This is lightweight and the way that this spindle functions, it's basically a truly supported spindle in that once you get it going, your hands are free to start drafting out. Um, so if you're interested in transitioning from a drop spindle to a support style spindle and you're struggling with getting that balance and this is going to be the last non-traditional style of spindle that I talk about. Moving forward, I'm going to jump in and really dive into the different styles and types of support spindles that are out there as well as moving from a uh, park and draft to a much more consistent, continuous style of spinning with a support spindle. So stay tuned for those. But today we are focusing on this particular design and the fiber that I'm going to be using, it is combed top, but this is not the Malbrigo, it is a mystery mixed fiber. And this is a fiber that has a lot of spring to it. And I chose this because it's a little bit more challenging to spin. It's got some down fibers in there, which is why you've got so much springiness to it, as well as merino, and I think there's a little bit of cheviot in here as well. As you can see, anytime you start working with combed top, you always wanna see if you can get some smaller sections. The, I mean, unless you're really focused on wanting to spin back and forth across the top of the strip of fiber, you can absolutely break it into a smaller and more workable section like so. Now, the spindle in, and, and this is my only constructive on how this particular design has been constructed. This piece right here, this, this plastic piece, for me, has caused a lot of frustration and it's it's only because it has this part right here where it shifts from this like sleeve that sits onto the spindle and I'm not quite sure why it was designed that way but it it has caused just a little bit of frustration for me more aesthetic than anything else the other thing, this spindle is what I would call a very, very, very fast spindle. And so if you're not careful, it's very easy to put in way too much twist. So, and, and as you can see, it just, it will spin literally forever, which is great because as it's doing its thing, you can work on playing with your fiber and, and figuring out where your drafting zone is and all of those things. So I am going to go ahead and get started. So the way that, and again, you could start with a leader. The other thing that's a little bit confusing about this one is it's not, 
I almost wish the shaft were just a little bit longer because I'm not going to be able to put a whole lot of fiber on here and still do the temporary cop. And I think for me, for somebody who always spins with a temporary cop and then winds on so I can can really analyze my single as I'm spinning, I just don't have enough room to do that. And so that is something that I had to get used to with this particular style of spindle. So getting started on the spindle in, tuck that on under there, just to get it out of the way. Open up a little bit of fiber like so. So it's going to, when I fold it over, it's going to want to stick together. Remember, wool wants to stick together. And I don't have to give this a lot of twist to get it going. I'm just going to give it a gentle twist and then draw it out. I also like that the way this is designed, depending upon if you're right-handed or left-handed, it's going to stay stable. You don't have to spin with it straight up and down like you would if you were using this as a drop spindle and you had the weight, you can relax your shoulders and spin off to the side and you will still be able to draft out just fine. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I have the twist. So now I have my single and I will take it out and wind on. And that's pretty much it. As it spins, I can work on, so again, here's my drafting triangle. This is a great spindle to start practicing that continuous spin. So if you're transitioning from a drop spindle to a support spindle, most drop spindles are top whirl. I would recommend switching from a top whirl to a bottom whirl because that's essentially what all support spindles are. The beads, the whirls, whatever the design is, it's, it's going to be at the base or at the bottom. And when you are support spinning, your hand is going to essentially be this part right here. So that's the great thing with a spindle in. This is kind of functioning as what your hand's going to do when you take that piece away. So as I get started, one of the things that I'm going to, to, to practice is resting my hand on the shaft because that's gonna enable me to start getting used to the idea of uh, flicking as I'm drafting and then winding on. So here's that. And as I do this, I will always roll my fingers back. It's essentially untwisting the fiber a little bit and that's going to prevent some of that sticking if you're having a hard time drafting out. Simply untwisting the fiber a little bit as you draft out, it's going to open it up and it's going to make it easier to get the consistent yarn that you want. So give it a flick. The other thing that I realized as I was working with this particular style, the hook on the top almost doesn't need to be there. I, I'd like to try one of these without the hook because I'm not suspending this, which I could, that's the other thing. Again, 
As you know, I'm such a big fan of spindles that can be used for a lot of different things. If you're not quite ready for the base and you just want to use this as a suspended style of spindle, you absolutely can, and in that case, the hook does come in handy. But as you can see, you go. And the base is sitting on beads in there, so you can move that base around to get it to where you want it to be. And I always like to show apply back, so apply back with the spindle in. Now this is incredibly fluffy yarn, so I'm getting sort of a thick and thin as I do this, which I like, but you can see how fluffy it is as I go back and forth between long draw and more of a short forward draw. The spindle also, I would love to say that the spindle works well for plying. The only problem that I've run into with plying on the spindle is, as I've said, it, I would need a bigger whorl, and that was just the style that I've chosen. Katie Mae does an excellent job of working with spinners and is willing to do custom orders. So if this is a style of spindle that you would like to try, please reach out to her on her website. It is, and it's one of the reasons why I'm showcasing it, it is a great transition spindle if you want to transition from a suspended drop style of spindle to a supported style of spindle because it's all one package. You don't have to worry about finding the right bowl. You don't have to really worry about anything because it comes all ready to go out of the box. You can just start spinning. And because it has this base, it enables you to just let the spin go and really focus on what's happening in your drafting zone. And you can spin as fast or as slow as you want, which is also a little bit unique in a traditional support style of spindle. Once you flick it, it it's going to go regardless uh, or depending upon the weight of it. It's, it's going to travel at the speed that it was built and designed for, whereas this one you have a little bit more latitude in how fast or how slow you want this to go. So today's spindle is the Spindle In, which is a great segue spindle if you're moving from a suspended to a support, supported style. As always, if there's something that you would like to see specifically, whether it be a tool or a technique, doesn't just have to be a spindle, I've got some wheels, as well as also some weaving tools, if you'd like to see any of those, please drop your ideas or suggestions down in the comments. As always, happy spinning.